When we try to imagine the world as seen through the eyes of God, we find ourselves grappling with a perspective that is vastly different from our own. It's like trying to understand the vastness of the universe while standing on a single planet. In the Bible, specifically in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9, we're reminded of this profound difference. God tells us, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. This statement sets the stage for understanding that God's viewpoint is as high above ours as the heavens are above the earth. This divine perspective simplifies the complexities of human existence into two primary categories, those who are being saved and those who are perishing. It's a stark division, one that doesn't account for the many nuanced groups we humans tend to create. We label and divide, placing Baptists here, Pentecostals there, atheists somewhere else, and so on. Our world is a mosaic of endless distinctions and categories. But from God's viewpoint, as shared in the scriptures, there are only two defining groups. This perspective is echoed in the New Testament, particularly in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, where it says, The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This binary vision reflects a fundamental spiritual reality that categorizes humanity based on their relationship to salvation. Consider the implications of this view. Imagine a bus full of people or an office where you work. According to this divine perspective, an invisible line runs through these spaces, a line that separates the saved from the perishing. This isn't a line we can see with our eyes, but it's a line that exists nonetheless. It's a concept that prompts us to see beyond the physical and consider the spiritual state of those around us. Even more sobering is the thought that this dividing line exists everywhere even in places where we hope for unity, like churches. Yes, even among those who gather to worship, the invisible line separates the saved from the perishing. This division extends into the most personal human relationships, affecting families, friends, and communities. As Christians, recognizing this perspective and aligning our worldview with God's can be challenging. It demands that we look beyond our human inclinations to categorize and judge based on our limited understanding. Embracing God's simplistic yet profound division requires us to rethink how we interact with the world, potentially reducing conflicts within the body of Christ as we draw closer to the teachings and love of Christ. This alignment might be demanding, but it offers a pathway to a more profound understanding and a deeper connection with the divine. It's pretty clear when we think about it. Jesus really boiled down all of God's messages to us into two big ideas. Love God with everything you've got and love other people just as much as you care about yourself. These aren't just nice thoughts to pass the time. They're meant to be the bedrock of how we live every day. But let's face it, looking around today, it seems like a lot of us are forgetting about this whole love thing. It's not just something you see on the news or read about online. You can feel that chill even closer to home. Maybe even in our own churches. Churches are supposed to be places of warmth and welcome. Right. Yet sometimes, they feel just as frosty as anywhere else. And this division 
isn't just out there in the big wide world. It's right here among us who call ourselves Christians. It's sad to see how we split into camps. Baptists, Episcopalians, Methodists, you name it. Each group waving their own flag. Sometimes forgetting that we're all supposed to be on the same team. It's especially tough to swallow because at the end of the day, no church's label is going to be what saves us. That's the real talk. Salvation isn't about which church pew you warm. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sure, denominations have their place. They help us sort out where we stand on different issues, and that can be really helpful. But they shouldn't be the reason we turn our backs on each other. We're all trying to follow the same Jesus, after all. Remember what John said in his first letter. Chapter 5, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. It doesn't get clearer than that. Eternal life, the kind that really matters, comes from Jesus, not from having the right kind of church membership card. Maybe it's time we all took a step back and thought about this. If we really believe what Jesus taught, then how about we start by loving each other a little more? Let's knock down these invisible walls we've put up between us. Because if we get right down to it, there's only one thing that truly divides us from each other, whether or not we've got Jesus in our hearts. And that's something no denomination can claim exclusive rights to. It's quite simple when you boil it down. Eternal life isn't something you can earn or find by yourself in all sorts of places. It's not hidden in how many times you go to church or which church you go to. It's not tucked away in some deep philosophical book or buried under a pile of good deeds. No, finding eternal life is a lot simpler and yet profound. It's all about knowing Jesus Christ. So, when we start thinking our church membership or the number of times we pray each day is what's going to save us. We're missing the mark. Salvation isn't a club membership. It's a relationship with Jesus. That's the heart of it. It's not about labels or rituals. It's about Him. And that's something to really think about, especially if you've been caught up in all the extras and missed the main point. This also means that, as followers of Jesus, we're all family, brothers and sisters, and families are supposed to stick together, right? Even when they don't agree on everything. Sure, there are important beliefs we all hold on to tightly, like who Jesus is and what he did for us. But beyond those core truths, there's a lot of room for different opinions and interpretations. Imagine getting to heaven and finding out you're sharing it with folks who didn't see everything just the way you did. That's going to happen because it's not our little differences that define our faith. It's Jesus, plain and simple. So why waste time fighting over the small stuff here on earth? Instead, we should be pulling together, looking out for each other, because we're all heading in the same direction. If we're following Jesus, that is. Let's make it our job to defend and support each other, not tear each other down over which church we go to or which Bible study we attend. Let's be the kind of family that sticks together, that loves fiercely and lives out what Jesus taught us about loving God and loving people. That's the real sign of a mature Christian, how well they love, not how well they argue. In our conversations about faith and what it means to be a believer, we often come across this idea that seems to divide everything into two clear-cut categories. You're either with God or you're not. There's no middle ground, no sitting on the fence. It's like the world is split into two teams 
and you've got to pick which side you're on. The Bible speaks about this in pretty straightforward terms, especially when it talks about the message of the cross in Corinthians. To some, it seems like nonsense, but to those who are being saved, it's the power of God itself. Now, this might seem harsh to some, especially in a world where we like to think there are many shades of gray in between. But according to the Bible, when it comes to the eternal stuff, the spiritual stuff, it's black and white. You are either on the path to salvation, walking the narrow road with Jesus, or you're heading the other way down a much broader, perhaps easier path that leads to destruction. Jesus used the metaphor of gates and roads to make this clear. He talked about a narrow gate that leads to life, a gate that's not just hard to find, but tough to squeeze through. Contrast that with a wide gate on a broad road that many people find much easier to travel. This road doesn't require much from you. It's the go. With the flow kind of road, but unfortunately, it doesn't end well. What Jesus is getting at here is that following him isn't just about saying the right things or showing up at church. It's about making deliberate, sometimes tough choices every day. Choices that might set you apart from others or lead you down a lonelier path. But it's also the path that leads to real life, eternal life, which he promises is worth every bit of the struggle. Now, Seeing so many folks falling away from this path can be disheartening. It's like watching friends or family members get swept off by the current of the broad road. This great falling away that the Bible talks about isn't just a prophecy. It's something that can happen right before our eyes. And it's tough to witness. This is why it's crucial for us to be intentional about our faith not just floating along, hoping we're on the right track, but actively choosing every day to follow Jesus. That means digging into our Bibles, clinging to the truths we find there, and not just the easy parts, but the challenging ones that test our comfort zones. We also need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, as Hebrews tells us. He's not just a figure from the past. He's the living reason our faith has any power at all. He's the one we're following, the one who blazed that narrow trail and invites us to walk it with him. So, as we journey forward, let's not get caught up in the divisions or the noise that can distract us. Let's remind ourselves and each other to focus on the things above where Christ is. It's not about which church we go to or how we choose to worship. It's about keeping our hearts and minds set on Jesus, following him down that narrow road and encouraging each other every step of the way. That's what really counts.